Hello there guys, and welcome to my Scum 0 0.95 first look, as obviously this dropped yesterday when I'm recording this, uh, basically the day after the streamer event, which is what I said in my previous video, it normally comes a day or two after. Um, so other than the horde thing that we'll get to later on, uh, they have actually introduced, obviously, you've got the flamethrower. You've got one variant of the Scar, which is the DMR. You've got a few new hats, fireman hats. You've now got a 45 ACP suppressor, which I'm hoping is going to fit on the amp. We shall try this right now. Yes, it does. Excellent. Uh, oh, I didn't get myself a backpack. Let me just get myself a backpack. There we go. I forgot about that. Alright, let's see. Before we do the other things, I want to see how this UMP sounds with the suppressor on it now. So yeah, you've got the flamethrower, the Scar DMR, and of course, our good old friend, the pickup truck, is back. I'm hoping more colours are available later on. Um rather than just the one yellow orange sunburst orange maybe um it's not it's more yellow to me than orange but that might just be my eyes um yeah so this is now fully modular same as the the Volkswagen and the Leica you can take the doors off you can take the roof off you can take all of these bits off two people can sit in the back so you can have one, two, three, four, five, six people in this vehicle, as far as I'm aware. Which is rather a lot. Is rather a lot. Uh, Alright, let's see what this sounds like. Look, that looks good with the suppressor on, doesn't it? Ooh, that sounds tasty. Switch it to single fire. Hello. Don't particularly want to spawn in the horde just yet. If I can avoid it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, so that's nice. Right, that was just me playing around with that because I wanted to see what it was like. Let's get to the main event. The flamethrower, which is craftable. And speaking of crafting, we now have the entire new craftable menu, which has a... Um, search function. So everything is split up here now. It's not no no longer in your main sort of tab across the top. So you've got items, base building, and cooking all switched up. And what also you can do is add to favorites. So then you've got everything that you would normally craft, probably when you you know first spawn in, things like bows and knives and stuff like that. You can drop into your favorites menu and have a nice long list. Oops, nice long list here that also works with food and building stuff, base building stuff. But also, I just want to show you, if we just do this, there we go. What will happen now is, if we go to stone, it will now display in the vicinity with whatever items you have on the floor, sticks, stones, rags, whatever. It will now show you what is craftable in the in the vicinity so with these three rocks we can craft a big stone head small stone axe head and a stone knife and you've also got um the recipe as well which you can expand and it's nice and big now so it was a little bit tedious sometimes to see uh, on the left hand side when it was a smaller thing but you can now see and you can choose that with anything get the details and it will give you the recipe for everything that you need craft the stone or craft these arrows in that particular case and if we go to there you go firearms so the improvised grenade launcher you need all of this stuff so you need eight eight scrap one bar seven bolts speaking of bolts you can now craft bolts and nails uh we just go here. There you go. You need a workbench or a 
a drill press or a lathe machine in, can be found in the towns and you need one piece of scrap metal not sure how many bolts that will give you I'm assuming one piece per one bolt actually let's test it can you spawn in scrap metal uh, metal scrap and then also if we just quickly go here and base building put this down oh hang on I thought I did have this switched on there we go right so now if we get a piece of scrap again turn that off and if we get a piece of scrap metal Right, now if we go into crafting and we want bolts. Uh, not base building, items, there we go. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Craft. I'm assuming one scrap is one bolt. Yes, one scrap is one bolt. Okay, that's fine. What is also now not exactly what everybody was after... But, um, what is a very nice feature is <clears throat> how you used to take bolts and nails and things out of the boxes, for example. You used to get a loading circle one by one, one by one. Now, it's instantaneous. Just boom. 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 Straight out. There's no loading screen. There's no nothing. And what also you can do with the new crafting menu. Uh, if we do. Uh, bobby pin. There you go. No, that's not what I want. I want pick lock, lock pick. Sorry, wrong one. Lock pick. There we go. You can see it's craftable because it's. I've got the stuff and it's grayed out. What you can do is this. Auto craft. You hit that once. And it will just keep crafting it. I'm not touching the keyboard. I'm not touching the mouse. It will just keep crafting as many as you have out of the bundle. Pretty quickly, I must say. And it will just keep going through until it's all done. So, there you go. And I've just crafted all of those in, what, 30 seconds, if that, 20 seconds? So that is a very... Autocraft is a long-awaited, nice feature. A very nice feature. And the whole redesign of this... Making it bigger so it's visible. Also, they've moved your health system over onto the left, uh, onto the right, sorry, so you can still see your inventory. Uh, metabolism stays the same. And you have a manual as well now for the newbies. So you've got all the survival tips, equipment, what you need to do, gives you all of the controls as well. And whilst we're on the subject of controls, <laughs> they have now added. Uh, quite a few more, not that one, quite a few more, uh, where is it, options, there we go, B -b -b they've now added quite a few more controls as well, aim down sights, you can either have it to hold or toggle, let's just try toggle, I haven't actually tried the toggle, there you go, and then every time you do something new, you get these survival tips, oh, it's still hold, Okay, whatever. I prefer hold. It's, again, personal preference for whatever you want. Personal preference. Uh, and these are the survival tips. But you can turn those... Uh, where is it? i just got to find it now. Where is the survival tip setting? I can't remember. And then, obviously, you've got all of the new settings for the hordes and for the abandoned bunkers i think it's only the abandoned bunkers i'm not sure if it also um applies to normal bunkers maybe it's under here where was it there was a function or uh, it must be in the server settings. Where the hell is it? Third person. World bunkers hunting cargo drop. Oh no! Don't want to play with that. Off, off. 
Features. Uh, I think it might be under features. No. Nope. Hmm. Where the hell is it gone then? There was one setting that I did see where you can change the um, tips. You can turn the survival tips off. And you've got beginner, medium, and expert. But for, I cannot find it for the life of me now. It's it's here somewhere, I promise. It is here somewhere. But I just can't find it. Uh, nope. No idea where it is. It is there somewhere. I have seen it, definitely. Not in options. There it is. Look, right in front of my face. Survival tip level. Beginner immediate expert so hopefully you won't constantly get bugged with it because it can be a little bit annoying but it is a good thing for the new guys don't get me wrong but it can be a little bit annoying constantly coming up like that and it should go away now right enough yabbing on about all of this good features let's get down to the real deal the flamethrower there you go There we go. In my opinion, the flame looks a bit cartoony. You know what I mean when I say that? It sort of... I don't know. It looks a bit cartoony. Uh, but obviously, it will stop most things in their tracks. And it also sets them on fire as well, which is quite nice. See, that fire effect is okay. That looks good. That? I don't know. Not sure about that one just yet. Might need to get used to it. And of course, it takes fuel. Uh, and it is craftable. So if you go to crafting... Uh, flamethrower details. There you go. You can see what you need. Basically, very simple to craft. There's not actually that much components, you know, like a drill or something like that. You can just scrap metal. All right, 13 pieces of that. Some fuel... One or the other. A hose. In garages. Industrial buildings. Oh, 20 duct tape. Okay, 20 duct tape is a bit of a lot. I'll give them that. A lighter, six wire, three rubber, and three uses of... Well, no, it's 20 uses, not 20 duct tape. 20 uses. And three uses of a hammer-it-together weapon, basically. So, you know, this is a... A pretty early first game weapon that you can get. Really. And it's going to do quite a lot of damage. Quite a lot of damage. So yeah, that is the flamethrower. Now, we have the SCAR. The SCAR DMR. Which, oh, bad light there, hang on. Let's try and get some proper light. There you go. That's what it looks like. Obviously, you can put different scopes on it. These are the magazines, which look... Quite nice, actually. I like the 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 half and half. That looks quite good. And that's something I think they should get rid of. Don't see the point in loading an empty magazine into the weapon. And of course, they take 308 uh, <clears throat> ammo. Excuse me. I got a bit of a hoarse voice this morning for some reason. Uh, yeah, so if we just load up one of these, and we can hear what it sounds like. I wonder if... Because I'm pretty sure... There is a 308 suppressor, isn't there? Or am I being... Yes. Will it fit? Ye yes, it does. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So you can also put 308 suppressor on it as well. Because I think the 308 suppressor was only really for the... Uh, I can't remember what gun it is now. Is it the Carbon Hunter? I think it's the Carbon Hunter. What does that take? 30 odd 6. I can't remember now. Off the top of my head. Right, let's just load up a couple of these. And we'll have a quick play of how it sounds like. And these are the new fireman hats, volunteer, 
Red, black, and yellow. Basically. Oh, I can't do it whilst I'm loading. Come yeah, on, there we go. And I do have one more because he put it in the gun anyway. But let's just put this on and see what it looks like. Put the red one on. There we go. That's pretty cool. What would be good now, uh, having the fireman helmet, hats, helmets, is to have a fire resistant suit. That should be the next item that they should introduce. Just so you can have a little bit of resistance from the flamethrower. Obviously, you're not going to be invincible to the flamethrower. But with the fire resistant suit, it would give you a little bit of resistance, which would be quite good. Right. Load up this. I wonder why they didn't introduce the, uh, the other weapons. Let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, it's got a nice ring to it. I don't want to set the horde off just yet, so. Okay. And now, what does it sound like with the suppressor on? Okay, like every other suppressed weapon. <laughs> okay. Oh, thought I heard a noise then. So yeah, that's the new stuff. And then, of course, the vehicle, like I said. Which... You can, it's modular, same as I said already, you can remove everything, take it all off, remove the back door, uh, drop that down there, you can remove the wheels, you can actually open the back now, which is quite cool, that's nice, uh, you can remove the trunk door if you want, so you can have it a pure flatbed, you can remove the whole body, Oops, on the floor, although I don't think you'd be able to carry that in real life. You can remove the hood, obviously, same as same as the other vehicles, completely switched over. And of course, you need a battery and an alternator as well. There's the alternator and there is the battery. You will need these parts for to get it running. Battery, alternator, those two. Now, if we take the roof off, make a convertible one, there we go. Oops, get that on the floor. And let's just get these sides off as well. Um, as for the spray paint of the vehicles, nothing in this update yet. That will come at a later date. Um, we thought it might come, you'll be able to use the spray cans that you have for the weapons. But no, they do not do not work, so I'm guessing they're going to introduce something different for the vehicles. Maybe you can only get the vehicles sprayed at the trader. This is what it sounds like. Also, they have um, lowered the sound level of the vehicles. As you can see, it's a lot quieter now, whereas before, the bikes and the vehicles were generally very, very loud, especially the bikes. But now they're a bit quieter. So you don't have to, you know, in me, in post, when I'm doing the editing, I don't have to chop and cut and lower the levels of all the vehicles when I'm in them. So that's the vehicle. And of course, it is completely burnable. And when you burn it down to the ground, the engine will just disappear and then it will be rendered useless. It's a shame they don't explode, because, you know, there is petrol in there, and it would explode. But what should happen is, I think it would take one... Yeah, a bit more yet. Okay, we're out of that one. This is why I got two. Because I'm a smarty pants. I think it takes one full flamethrower canister to completely destroy the vehicle. So if we just keep doing this, eventually, it should all be completely destroyed. Also, with all of the body parts on, it does give the burn effect. Uh, I should have left a couple of on, actually, to demonstrate that. But with the body parts on, it does give the burn effect. There you go. Now it's completely gone. Engine's gone. It's rendered useless. I wonder if we can burn these 
on the floor. Ooh, not in my face. Will we see the effect? Oh, they just they just disappear. That's interesting. Certainly the hood disappeared. Can we see the burn effect? No. I think they need to be on the vehicle. So what I'll do quickly, just to show you while I mentioned it. Spawn vehicle. Where are you? There you are. Let that drop from the sky. There you go. You see it's given it a sort of nasty, rugged, scratched effect. You see? And we're out anyway. Right. Let's go and fill this up. On to the main event. The Horde. Uh, add fuel. Now then, the question is, does that small one fill it up? It should do. Yes, 100%, that's okay. And you've still got... So, one use. Wow, okay, so you only need a small one. Right, the Horde is a little bit bugged at the moment. I think everyone is fully aware of that. Uh... In general, it's good. Let's see. For now, the, my settings currently are on vanilla here for this um, tutorial, whatever, showcase. But let's see if we can activate the horde. Nope. Okay, let's get a bit closer. I'm actually surprised... There are no puppets here. I have disabled sentries just for this purpose. Because I, um... I didn't want to have to end up dealing with those whilst I was running here. But yeah, they seem to have removed, certainly from the, um... From the server settings menu here. They have removed the... Max allowed interior and exterior zombie spawn modifier. It is in the ini file still. And I have increased it. But it doesn't seem to have worked because there are no puppets around me. Oh, uh, was that always like that? Can't remember. I think that is a little bit of a bug. I don't think that was like that before. I think that needs to be addressed. Yeah, there are no puppets here at all. Which is... Look, there's nothing. Um. Oh, they've changed that menu as well. I didn't even see that. Maybe because I've changed my ini file, I was kind of hoping it would produce more puppets, but I think, in actual fact, it hasn't made the slightest bit of difference. I know that there are some questions currently on the Discord regarding how do you change this. Um, hmm. I mean, there was that one puppet over there. There seems to be nothing. Yeah, look, this isn't this isn't right at all. There's nothing here. Oh. Okay. That noise means the horde is activated. That noise means the horde is activated. And what should happen? Yeah, see, they should spawn in from all different angles but as you can see that was one two three four oh five hello that was five and what will happen is they won't spawn in you you saw yeah see every time you change direction if you're staring at the same spot they won't spawn in. So those four all spawned in just by that bush. If I move... Oh, now it's finished. <laughs> Typical. Typical. So, I think, personally, the horde system needs a little bit more work. 
I like the fact that they spawn in randomly around you. That's good. Obviously, they can also now break down doors and windows as well, which uh, I suppose I could showcase here if I went to a building. But, yeah, to me... One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven puppets is not a horde. On my server settings that I play, I have 18 times puppets for the exterior, and I had, I think it was 10 for the interior. And if you've seen my city video when I went into the city, that was a horde. So I do think it needs a little bit of ironing out. Uh, do we have any ammo left? I've got the UMP. Uh, let's just try and see. I don't know if they're able to break down these doors, metal ones. We shall have a look right now. We may as well test it quickly. This is just a quick flick through video. Is there anybody home? Oh, also... Yep, they will, look. He's banging. Also, the suicide puppets, again, this is currently bugged at the moment. But the suicide puppets shouldn't start beeping until they enter um, combat mode. So before it was you were in the vicinity, they would start beeping, you would wait, and they would then blow up. Now... See? They won't start beeping until they enter combat mode. Okay, we've triggered the new horde. Let's see what happens here. He's banging. There we go. And then basically what you can do is you can just do that. <laughs> he just spawned in randomly. Die, big guy. See, that's not... That's not a horde for me. I know there are some settings to adjust it. But people, uh, from what I've been reading on the Discord, people have been having a lot of problems with adjusting the settings for the horde. Oh wow, look, you just appeared. There is a lot of suicide puppets here. A lot. See, something is not right here. Okay, there's the horde again. Can you not blow up, please? There's the horde again. And he should start banging on that door soon. Okay, he's going to go boom in a minute. Come on. Yep, there we go. Burn! 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 Another one. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. Ooh, hello. Didn't see you there. Will they still... Okay. There you go. Now he's dead. So yeah, the horde system, in my opinion, needs a little bit of work. It's not fully there yet. In terms of a horde. Like I said, me personally, I preferred having 18 times puppets. Because to me, that was a horde. That was a horde. And my ham agree. But yeah, this it seems to be weird because they seem to be spawning in when I'm literally right on top of them. So I don't know, maybe it's because I've changed the ini file and the game doesn't like it. But I know, like I said, there's a lot of questions currently on the forums waiting on the Discord. Waiting for how the server settings should be adjusted and where they've all disappeared to. Uh, yeah, and that is definitely not right. That is definitely not right. But yeah, that's it. This was just a quick flick through of 0 0.95. You know, 
it comes with bugs, unfortunately, as any update does. It doesn't matter what it is. Any update will come with bugs. So at the time of recording this, they haven't released a patch yet. Um, I'm recording this on the day after it was released. Uh, so I should think within one or two days there will be a patch already to fix some issues. Uh, Game Pies and the guys at Scum are normally very, very good at getting a patch out there just after the update when there's a, a couple of bugs being found. Which is good. So obviously I will be doing a series. Uh, I might wait until we get the patch though, just so I can adjust the server settings because on vanilla it's just... <laughs> it's too easy because basically you can just go around with a bow and you'll be fine, you know. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention, if you put a lock on your door and if you board up your windows, puppets will not break it down and will not jump through the windows. So, uh, single player now, I will need locks. It's no more hiding the locks or, or ignoring them. I will need a lock to lock the door. And it would actually be good to keep a lock on me when I go into a room to look, quickly shove a lock on the door so they can't get in so I can have a little break, you know, and heal myself. I think people are going to be doing that quite a lot, is keeping a lock on them now. Just a rusty lock, just to keep the puppets out. But yeah, that's first look. 0 0.95. Good features, a few bugs. Me, personally, the Horde system needs working. Like I said, I like the fact that they all spawn around you. That's nice, and they run at you from different angles. But I do think it needs a little bit of work. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Ring that little notification bell so you get notified when my videos go live. And as always, I'll catch you all on the next one.